You know, at what point is it where it goes from alcohol and weed to, you know, your heroin use? Yeah. Um, so it was just alcohol and weed up until I was probably like 17. And then I got introduced to ecstasy, mm. um, which I loved right away. And, and that still felt like a party, too. It didn't feel um, super heavy. Um, I think like we all understood that we had graduated from like one level of just kind of teenage rebellion to like um, maybe the next level of of that being a little bit more serious. But I don't think um, I don't think I understood like the path I might have been going down at that time. And then um about a year later, I just, uh, so, you know, and then I started partying a little bit more and we were doing more and more stuff, but like, it just kind of felt like exciting and wild. And, um, I still didn't really feel like I was coping with anything. Um, you know, but I was definitely losing my career in the meantime, and I didn't have much care or concern about that, which should have been the first red flag. Right. Um, and then, you know, I just met the wrong person, unfortunately, um, a guy and started dating him and he did heroin. And, you know, the next thing you know, I'm on heroin. And um, that's why, like, whenever anybody asks me, like, if you could go back and talk to your younger self or what's a message you have for kids today or whatever it is, it's always pretty much the same one. Like, be careful who you surround yourself with, you know, like today in my life, I I stick with the winners. If that's a term from AA, stick with the winners. I surround myself with people that have what I want, not not um monetarily or even physically, but spiritually and emotionally. They live a life that I aspire to to live as well and I I think a lot of people are attracted to me because I live a life um that, you know, is appealing and not because I have all of these you know, uh, treasures or whatever, but just right. because like, I'm finally cool with like who I am as a person, but so, yeah, I just met the wrong person and, um, and I probably suffered with a bit of like a love addiction in my younger sure. years. And that might have been the manifestation of like my father leaving or n having like little to zero relationship with my mother and stuff like that. But again, still no awareness of that. Right. At 18 years old, you're not like, damn, I want to date this, you know, slightly older guy who's on heroin because I'm in need of like a man to take care of me. Like you don't know those things, right. you know? So, so that happened and, and uh, you know, be he was in the same industry as well. And, and I think because we still had some money and, um, had a nice little apartment in the hills. And, um, the first year I was on heroin, I never got sick, meaning I never had to deal with withdrawal because we always had money for it. So I, I think still, even in that first year, I wasn't like, I, I might not have understood the gravity of the drug, which I call like the King Cobra of all drugs. Like, I don't think there's a more powerful drug than, um, heroin, except for obviously fentanyl, but that's all in the opioid family. Right. So, um, but I knew in that year that it was not a party anymore. I knew I had crossed the line and I knew I was in like very dangerous territory, but there's, I think like a romance you have with that drug specifically, especially in the first year when you're still like capable of achieving a certain kind of high and there's no withdrawal um that really like allows for the the like like the illusion that like everything's okay still if that makes sense this is the knocking doors down podcast featuring celebrities experts and everyday people who have overcome adversities including addiction mental health and trauma to live purposeful lives, and that's what Knocking Doors Down is all about.